Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another Venom vlog. And today we're gonna continue our run on the comic books. Now that we've talked about Agent Venom and his first five issues, I wanted to dive back into Eddie Brock because obviously he's a favorite of a lot of ours on this channel. But during this time of Agent Venom, Eddie Brock is going through massive changes. As we talked about in a previous episode in the comics, we had, a, I think it was called Six Ways to Die or New Ways to Die, something like that. And it had, a, you know, all these villains, the Thunderbolts showed up to New York and they were attacking Spider-Man, you know, going after him. And in the meantime, we had Martin Lee, who runs a, a, a organization that feeds the homeless in New York called Feast. And Aunt May works for him and so did Eddie Brock. He was volunteering as someone who was gone through a lot of problems, you know, try to commit his, you know, suicide. He sold the symbiote off. Then he tried to kill Aunt May while she was in a hospital. And now he has been forgiven, uh, you know, by himself and, and people around him and, um, and Aunt May herself. And she wanted to give him a second chance. So did Martin Lee. So they believed in Eddie and they gave him a chance to work at their, you know, facility to help the homeless. And that's where he became anti-venom when Martin Lee, you know, touched uh, Eddie's shoulder and the cancer cells that were inside of him and the, the remaining symbiote cells, which I guess we know that now as maybe being a codex, if we want to connect that dot like that, they don't really say that, you know. But uh, but we could maybe connect that dot, and it looks like the uh, you know the powers of Martin Lee because he's also known as the villain uh, Mister Negative. He touches Eddie, and this electric spark goes through Eddie, and it you know ignites the symbiote cells, and uh, that causes them to react against the cancer cells, and in a way inverts his ability, inverts his powers, and uh, or inverts the symbiote traces that are left in him, and turns him into a giant white venom who's like six seven feet tall uh, known as anti-venom and he kind of feeds on poison so if you're like a junkie or a drug addict um, he'll come and dr you know drain you of those uh, you know poisons out of you and and then they'll burn up inside of him and he'll cure you and then spider-man he was trying to cure spider-man of the irradiated blood that gives him his superpowers you know in him and, and then also he was able to peel off some of the scorpion's costume when scorpion was venom and so you got to see like a matt gargan eddie brock fight in that story so it's it's been you know i love that stuff it's always great i always say that i'm like yeah it's great it's been great um but that's it's true i, I love the anti-venom he's one of my favorites and i love eddie and i love eddie during his his time as anti-venom because he really is trying to do the right thing again but he, he like anyone who has trouble uh doing the right thing he does make mistakes and so uh, that's what this these next few stories are going to be is eddie brock trying to find his place again and so this story starts off with a uh, and it's i'm sorry this takes place in a spider-man co comic book called spider-man extra and i think there was like three issues of it they didn't last very long and it was just a bunch of little short stories that came out during the brand new day storyline of spider-man where they had like the four different writers you know helping spider-man get back on his feet after the mephisto fiasco and everything and uh, this story is written by Dan Slott and the art is by Chris Piccolo and I dig it. it the story is called Black and White. It's in, again, issue number two of Spider-Man Extra. You can find it digitally. Um, I don't know if there's a trade paperback of Extra out there or not. If there is, you can find it that way. I don't think it's currently in print though, so you'll probably have to get it on eBay or something or find the issue on eBay. But this is a fun little short story that kind of focuses on Eddie Brock. And I remember reading this when it came out because uh, I was like, wait, Eddie Brock's in another issue. I've got to go check it out. And this is the issue that really after, you know, the, new ways to die storyline where where eddie meets you know mr negative and that's where he gets powers from this is a mr negative versus eddie brock storyline and this is why i would like mr negative to come back and be a recurring character in the venom comic books i'm like look if they're not going to do much with him in spider-man he's a great character for eddie brock to fight against uh, especially since he kind of created eddie as anti-venom uh, so there's like a history there so this issue kind of, you know, feeds that, you know, like, you know, if you're out there and you're kind of jonesing for a story with, you know, Venom and, or Eddie and, and Mr. Negative, this is it. This short story is it. It's, it's phenomenal. And it starts off with this young girl named Jenna, who is a junkie. She's a drug addict and, and she's hooked on heroin, I believe. And, you know, that's when anti-Venom shows up and he finds her. He beats up all the guys around her. They're like, they're even doing like, it, it gets crazy for poor Jenna. And she's like, I think they were meant her to be a recurring character. And unfortunately, after like a one or two of these stories, she doesn't pop up again. But I'd like to see, you know, follow up on her, see where she is in the universe right now, in the Marvel universe. Uh, because uh, Eddie, it seemed like he took a liking to her. He does kind of white knight a lot, Eddie. You know, when it, when it comes to like women, it's like, you know, Anne, she didn't really want him on some level, but he kind of pushed his way into her life again when he was Venom. And that led to her death. There was uh, the, the people who lived underground and uh, there was like two women I think that lived underground in San Francisco that he kind of had feelings for and he kind of white knighted a lot um, but then there's also you know this girl Jenna and Jenna is you know she's, like I said she's a young lady who gets hooked on drugs she moved to New York she you know hooks up with bad people and Eddie cures her of her addiction 
and sends her to feast. He says, hey, look, I know some people who can take care of you. If you want a second chance, they gave me one once. Here's a card for a lady named Mae Parker and Martin Lee. Go check them out and they can maybe help you. So that was a cool way to bring in Aunt May into the storyline too. Um, and, uh, you know, because I think after The Last Temptation of Eddie Brock, there's just kind of a bigger connection there with Aunt May and Eddie, especially since she kind of forgave him and, you know, worked side by side with him at Feast to kind of, you know, push Eddie to turn over a new leaf and a non, you know, uh, you know, monstrous release. I don't know how Eddie was able to get away because I think he killed a nurse, but maybe nobody found out he killed the nurse, um, I'm assuming. But uh, yeah, he but he's now, you know, work, it was working at Feast when he became anti-venom. So now he's not working anywhere. He's just, you know, uh, sending Jenna there because he knew that place helped him. So I like that. I like that connection. I thought Dan Slott did a really good job there um you know kind of connecting that dot and keeping that continuity uh, going with eddie and his relationships with people and uh, and then as after he you know sends jenna to go meet aunt may which she does and you know, aunt may's like hey i'll try to help you out uh, if any friend of eddie brock's you know we'll try to take care of you here and uh, or i don't know if she says eddie brock but she's like oh yes a friend sent me here and she's like well we'll take care of you and so you get a, a, a sweet moment with aunt may in this storyline and then meanwhile the rest of the issue is you know, Venom tracking down or anti-Venom tracking down where these drugs came from and who's moving them. And it eventually leads him into conflict with Martin Lee, AKA Mr. Negative. So he runs into him and his inner demon group, you know, it's like all these ninjas that wear these like kabuki masks. Uh, they're called the inner demons. And uh, and this, so they're, you know, part of the storyline and Eddie's fighting them and he comes face to face with uh, Mr. Negative. And he's like, uh, you know, and, he, and Mr. Negative says, hey, look, I know about you. I was there when you first appeared, I guess, you know, when you fought uh, Osborne and the Thunderbolts and everything. And, and, and Scorpion and, and Spider-Man. He goes, and I was there and I witnessed the whole thing. He goes, so I know you have an issue with Osborne. So do I. I'm trying to take away his power that he has over the city. And yes, maybe I'm an, another type of evil if you want to look at me that way. But I feel like I'm a more necessary evil than someone like Norman Osborne. We got to get, you know, all the crime and all the stuff he's involved with, uh, especially after he became leader of the Thunderbolt. And he's like, you know, leader of the Dark Avengers, and everything. He's got too much power. And so if you want, you know, like we can take him down together. And of course, Eddie's like, uh, no, screw you. You're a bad guy too. I'll get to Osborne and I'm going to go through you and then I'll get to him. And so the two of them fight and then the inner demons come in and fight and Eddie, you know, just starts kicking the crap out of everybody. But along the way and throughout the battle, he starts figuring out who Mr. Negative is. And at one point he gets, you think he gets defeated and he kind of slinks away and he escapes because the inner demons are just too powerful. They're even, they have healing factors. Like I love this, this scene where Mr. Negative's talking to one of his like subordinates and, and she's like, uh, you know, Hey, I, I, you know, we, we tried our best and there's like another guy next to him. And he's like, yes, we did everything we could. And then Martin Lee's like, or, you know, Mr. Negative's like, you did. And he pulls out a gun and shoots the guy like right in the chest. And then he's like, uh, he goes, I hate wasting bullets on you. He goes, but I hope that hurt a lot. And then he walks away and then the guy of course gets up and his chest is like, there's still a hole there, but he's like not dead. And he's trying to heal, he's starting to heal from it. So, uh, so yeah, it, it takes that old trope where it's like, oh, let's just shoot my henchman. But he did it just to hurt the henchman and <laughs> it didn't kill him. Uh, and he knew it wouldn't kill him. So I thought that was cool. It was like a cool take on an, a, an old trope and stuff like that. And, uh, and then at the end, uh, Eddie, he escapes because the inner demons overpower him. He notices when he's cutting them and hurting them and stabbing them and biting them, uh, they just heal they don't die and so he's like okay I'm, I'm outnumbered here so he disguised himself as like a truck driver gets into a truck and drives away and then he loops back around and he follows mr negative's group to a warehouse and when he gets there he looks inside and he sees mr negative turn back into martin lee and this crushes eddie because eddie's like wait Martin Lee's the guy who gave me my second chance. Him and Aunt May, or you know, May Parker, are the reason why I was at Feast when I became Anti Venom. And he goes, and May, and he goes, and now it makes sense. His powers must have, you know, ignited me and turned me into this somehow. And he's like, this is unreal. He goes, this, I, I, I can't accept this. And then. But he does. And he, he goes back to the church. Like the book started after he saw Jenna. He went back to the church where he first became Venom. And then now he goes back to the church again at the end of this. So I love that kind of framing for this storyline too, with the kind of, you know, Eddie and his faith and stuff like that. And going back to a, that church when he's at his lowest and looking for answers. I love that. So it shows him up on the cross as Eddie just holding onto the cross. And then he like slowly transforms into uh, anti-Venom. And I love what Chris Piccolo does on the artwork here. Every time you see things through Anti-Venom's eyes, it's black and white. There's no color on that panel uh, or that page. And it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, I love Chris's artwork. It's it's very chaotic and, and crazy, but I've always liked that. I always loved his style. He did a book called Steampunk when I was younger and in, in college that I really loved. And I love his stuff. And so when I saw this, I was like, yes, I'm so glad he's drawing this storyline. 
because every time he draws Venom, like he did that, uh, that uh, what was that, um, the Venom storyline where Matt Gargan was Venom when he was part of the Dark Avengers. He did that miniseries, and we talked about that on the show already, and I really liked his design there. But So this was him kind of doing new things with characters he's played around with before, and I loved it. So the black and white panels were great, but Eddie at the end is on the church, and he's holding onto the cross, and he's going, no one's going to believe me. He's having, He's remembering what it was like to bring a story to the public, to let New York know about the Sin Eater, and he remembers being wrong. So he's like, no one is going to believe Eddie Brock when I tell them this story. No one's going to believe me at all. And he goes, and so what do I do? Like, how do I, I got to go find proof. I got to, you know, go back to my journalistic ways in some way. I got to track him down, follow him again. And I got to get proof of him being, you know, Martin Lee and Mr. Negative at the same time. And, 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 and reveal essentially and destroy a whole neighborhood in New York who has their faith in Martin Lee, who's saving a neighborhood, who's feeding the homeless, who's actually making real change but at the same time is doing some really horrible things and killing people and putting drugs out there and hurting young people like Jenna. And so Eddie's at this big divide at the end. And I was like, wow, I really, really dug that. I know a lot of people out there aren't fans of some of the stuff Dan Slott does or, or him personally. Like he has me blocked on Twitter. Um, he and I and I even like there was a comic book that was stolen from Golden Apple, uh, Spider Man number seven hundred, and I chased the guy out into the streets and got those copies back uh, because you know I didn't want anyone to steal from Golden Apple. They were family to me, and they're they're you know they're a small business, and, and that they needed you know they need those comics to make money. And when that comic came out, it was a, it was a number one seller. And uh, and I you know and and then after that, like I you know Dan Slot, I don't know, like I guess I got caught up in some conversation on Twitter that I didn't realize was happening and I got blocked for him or maybe I I reviewed one of his books at one point and maybe I wasn't 100% positive on it because you know me, I get critical sometimes and I, I don't do it to hurt anyone's feelings or anything. I just give my opinion. But uh, but I, I don't know, somehow I got blocked by him. And then when I created a new Twitter account, I, you know, I, I was blocked too. So I'm like, okay, that's uh, that's cool. You know, but despite all that, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Um, I still, my opinions of the story are still the same. It's a great storyline and I, I dig it. And so I would say if you're an Eddie Brock fan and an anti-Venom fan, you should definitely read this one because it's great. And I think Dan Slott did a great job framing the story with the, you know, Eddie going to church, you know, when he's out of answers and he needs help, uh, but also him reflecting on his sins of his past and, uh, and looking back on, you know, getting the Sin Eater story wrong and, and believing that will make people not believe him now when he's trying to out Martin Lee. And then also how should he out Martin Lee? Because Martin Lee does so much good, even if Mr. Negative does so much evil. And so uh, it's great. And the story's called Black and White. And that's, I loved it. It's a great theme, uh, great visuals, great everything. And I, I really highly recommend you guys check this issue out. And if you haven't already, please do it. You can get on Comixology, I think for like $1.99, Spider-Man Extra number two, very good stuff. And it's only part of the book because I think that book has like three short stories in it. So it's only like the first third of the book, uh, but it's worth it. it. Just for the price, just for this is, is worth it. I don't even remember what the other two stories are. This is all I remember and it was awesome. Uh, so yeah, let me know what your thoughts are of this down below in the comments. If you have read it, if you haven't and you, and you want to and you go read it, whatever it is, let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. And we got a lot more anti-venom stuff coming up. Anti-Venom does join a team called the Revengers, and they kick the living crap out of the Avengers. Uh, so we'll talk about that coming up here. But then we also have a story before that, before we get there, and before we get to Spider Island, we have a story where Anti-Venom teams up with Punisher, and we get to see Jenna again. So that was cool that they brought that character back. And then there might be some other surprises along the way. So I'll try to get all these episodes to you guys recorded today and given to you throughout the week. And then, like I said, I'm moving soon, like within a week from now. So I may be low on videos for like, you know, the last week of the month, uh, but I'll do my best. And if any movie news pops up, I'll try to do a live stream or something and talk about it. So uh, let me know again, your comments down below, and uh, we'll talk more down there. Thanks so much. As always, see you in the future. Peace.